we like to say where others see waste, we see treasure. We live in a society of take, make, and waste. This linear way of thinking literally isn't sustainable. It's not good for people and it's not good for the planet. Nature has the answers. How can we take advantage of modeling what nature does without disturbing nature? That's what led us to trash. I'm Dr. Gabrielle Gausset. I'm Dean of Engineering and Associate Provost for Research here at Alfred University. When this project was initiated, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation approached me as my previous career was actually in the recycling space and said, we're really having some challenges with glass at material recovery facilities, particularly in New York State. Not only did I have some ideas, but I was now here at Alfred University, surrounded by brilliant glass faculty, staff, graduate and undergraduate students who would be more than enthusiastic to tackle these challenges. As an educator, as somebody who's driven by their own students, it is critical to question not only how are we mentoring these people, but how are we leaving a planet for them in the future? I'm Dr. Colin Wilkinson. I'm an assistant professor of glass science here at Alfred University. I'm also the director for the Center of Glass Innovation. To move towards a place of ending our anthropogenic carbon emissions, we have to really understand what to do with our own waste and how to engineer our waste into a better future. Part of this project is to tackle challenges in glass recycling all along its life cycle. So much of the glass that you put at the end of the driveway, unfortunately, ends up being landfilled. One of the limiting factors in recycling is the lack of an end market. If you're in a place that can process the glass and get it to a factory that can then remelt it into something new, it is likely that your glass will be recycled. However, if you're in places like Rochester and Buffalo, further away from these glass factories, you can struggle with recycling. Understanding that these are our limitations led us down the path of trying to make unique materials that will be able to consume lots of waste glass for an important environmental application. One of the things we're most proud of is our custom recycled glass materials that go into concrete capable of extending the lifetimes of seawalls. This project really started in a collaboration between Savannah River National Lab and the founders of Silica X. My name is Philip Galland. I'm the co-founder and CEO of SilicaX Incorporated. SilicaX is a material science company focused on taking material destined for the landfill and using that to create a new class of materials poised to revolutionize the green infrastructure marketplace. In April of 2022, I was speaking at the International Day of Glass. And at that event, I presented on the success we had had in literally a project to reverse engineer ancient Roman concrete. Once we all embrace that glass is infinitely recyclable, we won't let it be thrown in the ground anymore. We'll continually look at reuse, regeneration, becoming the model for the world on the circular economy. And as the UN said, if not now, never. Thank you very much. We had created self-healing material out of a waste stream, and that waste stream was glass. Silica X has been our commercialization partner. They have led the initial research. And here at Alfred University, we're proud to say that we've led the science. We've been able to take this project from a prototype, scaling it up, and looking at a real-world test. This summer, we will be launching the first experiment of an analog to ancient Roman concrete in over 2,000 years. In this project, we think we've created the de facto standard for the circular economy. 
A circular economy means that we use what we produce. If we produce waste, we have to figure out how to use it. We have this excess glass over here, and over here we have a problem with seawalls, is matchmaking. Let's see if we can make them work. We've been studying reverse engineering Roman concrete for decades, and we have found an analog material that is similar to the material that the Romans used. It's in Nevada, landlocked. It's called Nevada rhyolite. And it, like the Romans' material, is finite. The project that we're working on is a real attempt to recreate ancient Roman concrete, the fabled material that has lasted over 2,000 years in the Mediterranean basin. We've known what the Romans have put in concrete for a long, long time. There's been generations of folks that have studied this. They had two kinds of concrete. They had an architectural concrete and a marine concrete. The magical Roman concrete is the seawater concrete. Much of that has lasted several thousand years, and some of those are still usable and used today. The remarkable aspect is its ability to self-heal. When that concrete cracks, it rehydrates and makes new cement, basically, that glues those cracks back together to maintain continuity across that structure. Versus ordinary Portland cement concrete that might not ever heal or just disintegrate more rapidly after a strain event. Ordinary Portland cement is really the building block of modern civilization, yet it contributes 10% to all greenhouse gases. It also does not have a great lifespan, between 20 and 50 years, depending on the environment. We're targeting a multi-century life cycle for this advanced marine concrete. trying to recreate Roman concrete in an organized way. We started using this material with this beautiful volcano behind me roughly 10 years ago and have had great success with it. One issue though is this is located in rural Nevada, which is far, far away from any real urban base. So if we cannot take this material to urban centers, maybe we can synthesize and create a similar style of material utilizing waste products. We're using bottle glass as our basis for our aggregate. We're adjusting that chemistry and texture and synthetically manufacturing what is a natural material located here in the Western United States. This is geomimicry. We're trying to copy things that already exist in nature. So how do we do that? In our case, we mine the materials from our own waste. We process these recycled materials. We mill them down. They then are deposited into a crucible. This crucible is then heated, and while it is heating, the raw materials release just a little bit of gases, and that increases the surface area of the total material, and as a result, it's gonna sustain itself for a longer period of time. This material is then checked under X-rays. It is observed under microscopes to make sure it's got the properties we expect. And then we also examine it using vibrational spectroscopy to investigate the very atomic nature of the material. What we have here is the first of this new generation of foams. This material is the core of this experiment. This material will be mass manufactured. It will be broken into pieces and it will be cast into a concrete. This mass manufactured material will then be sank. For one year, we'll sample it periodically and we'll investigate what is happening to this material over a function of time. We're so excited to launch these coupons. They'll be monitored by a team to see how they'd stand up structurally and also how they work with the local ecology. One of our mantras is do no harm. When we're coming into the ocean, we want to create habitat. Our compositions require curing time, but part of that curing is it's interacting with the seawater. These 9,000 pound caissons both protect it as well as allow it to interact with the ocean 
and start its curing and its mineralization process. The Romans made concrete thousands of years ago and they did it right. And we're just so happy to be able to take that old technology, unravel how it was done, and then recreate that in a way that is gonna be beneficial to everybody on the planet. The largest looming question over all of our future is climate change. What we have here is the biggest step in the right direction for building climate resilient infrastructure. We are trying to have a significant impact on the way cities are built, whether it's seawalls or storm surge abatement, whether it's platforms for wind turbines offshore. This experiment is focused on self-healing concrete in seawater, but it and what will come from it have application in all building materials. When our material shows itself to be successful, we hope to use this material to improve the infrastructure of every coastal city. To be able to produce this material in the cities where their raw materials already exist as waste, and then use it to create new sustainable walls in the same location that is producing this waste. We want to turn your cities waste into its own protection to make it climate resilient. We're in this to provide real solutions that have a real impact that are going to literally make the world a better place. The shared vision between Alfred University and Silica X and the results from this experiment is being done with a focus on the benefit of the citizens of New York. However, what is really happening here is we are creating a potential model that is going to impact the world.